Are you better off going with an RX 5600 XT right now, or going team green with a GTX 1660 Ti or RTX 2060? Well, I benchmarked all three of those cards to find out. Now don't forget, if you aren't already, do consider subscribing for more videos like this one every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. So what is an RX 5600 XT? Well, essentially it's a 5700, the higher end model, as it has the same actual GPU core with 36 compute units and 2304 stream processors, with the only main difference being it's slightly underclocked and this model has six gigabytes of VRAM instead of eight. Now that slight underclock actually varies depending on the card. If you look at the stock AMD numbers, you'll see that the 5600 XT is a reasonable amount slower overall. You're seeing the game clock, which is AMD's term for the, the speed at which the graphics card will spend most of its time in game running at. Uh, and that speed is about 300 megahertz lower, give or take, than the 5700. But when you look at add in board partner cards like this Asus Tough model, it can boost anywhere up to 1770 megahertz in OC mode with a game clock of 1660, which is actually very close to their own 5700 XT Strix, which can boost our game clock to 1725. Now I should add, I believe my card has already had the BIOS update that a lot of the launch day reviewers were talking about, and any cards you buy right now should, and I should asterisk should, have that BIOS pre-installed, and so you don't need to worry about needing to flash it to get the, the full performance of your card. And while we're talking about this model, it's actually a pretty large card. It's a triple fan design with a slightly smaller fan in the middle and that setup did a pretty good job at keeping the car cool and relatively quiet as well which is great to see on something that looks this kind of behemothy. It is technically a three slot card in terms of its depth as it's a little on the thick side at least on the cooler itself. The rear bracket does only take up two slots but the cooler extends past that and so if you're planning on say putting another graphics card or something else directly below below this graphics card, which is never really recommended anyway, you might need to reconsider. Now also, in terms of its design, it's a pretty subtle aesthetic. There's basically no RGB on this except for a tiny little strip on the side. The front faceplate only has a sort of striping design and the same can be said about the back plate too, which is both equally refreshing and somehow amazingly boring. Now it only needs an eight pin power connector to keep it powered. Of course, you do get the 75 watts from the PCIe slot, so this card can only draw a maximum of 225 watts, which is actually pretty impressive. Now AMD reckons that a stock card will only draw about 150 under load, which actually puts it very well in line with both the 1660 Ti and the 2060 we're going to be comparing, and actually slightly less power draw overall than the 2060, which is something that can't always be said about AMD graphics cards. Now of course, this graphics card doesn't have all of the bells and whistles that the 2060 has, namely ray tracing. Of course, so that'll be up to you whether that's actually worth it to you or not. For me personally, I run a 1080 Ti in my, my personal rig and I don't really care for ray tracing all that much. I don't tend to play many games that actually have it supported and the only game that I do play is the new COD and I would only ever turn that on in the campaign which I've already completed so for me it's hardly a big deal. So with all that said, how does it actually perform? How does it compare to its similarly priced rivals? Well actually pretty well. Let's take a look at those results. So starting off with Battlefield 5, testing at 1080p on ultra settings with a Ryzen 13900X, we're seeing that the 5600 XT sits pretty much slap bang in the middle between the 2060 and the 1660 Ti with 92 FPS average. You can also see the 1% lows on the website link below by the way for all of these games if you're interested. Uh, and when it comes to COD Modern Warfare, it actually takes the lead here with 125 FPS over the 118 that the 2060 gets. But all of these gaming experiences are very playable. Basically all of them are above 100 FPS. The same can be said for PUBG 2 with again sitting almost perfectly in the middle between the 2060 and the 1660 Ti. In fact actually only one FPS off being perfectly in the middle here with 109 average. The same again can be said for Fortnite this time sitting a bit closer to the 2060 with 124 FPS average instead of the 2060's 103 and 108 for the 660 Ti, but overall it makes a lot of sense that it's sitting in this sort of position. So as you can see, the 5600 XT fits right in between the 1660 Ti and the 2060, which for the most part is where it fits in pricing. 
Now this tough model itself is a whopping 330 pounds, pricing itself basically completely out of the market, as you can get a 2060 for basically the same price or less for similar to better performance than it, and so there's no real point in going with one of these. Now you can find more sanely priced cards for anywhere between 250 and 300 pounds, which makes it a pretty decent value for money. I think I'd be more than happy to recommend a 5600 XT to anyone who's kind of on the fence about which graphics card to go for at this sort of price range. Well, you can go with a 2060 or 2060 Super for a little bit more money and get a little bit more performance across the board generally. This is a great value for money. And actually, I really like AMD's new driver suites. It has a lot of interesting features that actually can be useful at times and also I generally prefer their overlay to NVIDIA's but of course you don't get say NVIDIA highlights that a lot of games do have supported now. With that said the answer to would I put this in my rig if I was building a system at this sort of price range Actually, I think I would. Well, the 2060 is definitely a good option at this sort of price range, and if you do care about ray tracing, then of course you'd probably want to go for that. This offers a great value for money and similar performance overall for generally a little bit less money, depending on what type of card you go for. And in theory, there's a bit of extra overclocking headroom in there too. Now, with that said, those are my thoughts. I would love to hear yours in the comments down below. What do you think of the 5600 XT and the comparison to the 1660 Ti and the 2060 and out of that range which would you get yourself also let me know what you think of amd versus nvidia drivers in those comments down below too like i said at the start if you want to see more videos like this one every monday wednesday and friday do make sure you hit that subscribe button with a bell notification icon if you want to check out the 5600 xt i'm going to leave two links in the description down below one will be to this tough card itself and the other one will be a general search for 5600 xts uh, both of those links will be amazon affiliate links that will take you to your local amazon store where you can see pricing when we watch this because it can and does vary. If you want to support the channel in more ways than just watching these videos and subscribing then do take a look at the rest of the links in the description down below including the Amazon and Overclock UK affiliate links that don't cost you anything to use but massively help me out when you do use them especially if you're say building new PCs do go to those first. Otherwise there's also merch for hoodies or t-shirts like this one or a load of other cool new designs and stuff like Streamlabs OBS if you want to start streaming too. Otherwise, that is pretty much it. Feel free to check out some more videos over there. And if you've got any questions, leave those in the comments down below. Otherwise, that is pretty much it. We'll see you all in the next video.